Tracy, who had just come back after getting her knife from the car, froze when she saw Mr. Baldock turn around and gasp at the sight of Lisa trying to stab him to death. Lisa looked toward her, fear clouding her eyes, pleading silently as if saying, Help me, he found out that I was going to kill him. Tracy did not wait for a minute after that and lunged for the naked man whose back faced her. She thrust her knife into his back which lodged itself there. Exerting a lot of force, she pulled it out. Then she stabbed him again and again and again. The adrenaline flowing through her veins set her mind in a frenzy. She panted and took in deep, jagged breaths and continued stabbing the lifeless body who reminded her of all the people who had hurt her in her life. She really wanted to get back at them, and now she had succeeded. Tracy awoke to the morning light pouring in through her window and sighed. It was yet another day in the prison. She sat up in her bed, eyes wandering towards the door she knew would open to take her to the place her fate would be decided. That is the court. Peering in through the tiny window that resembled much of a rat hole, she remembered the first time she had opened her eyes to see the first streak of sunlight. She didn't remember most of it, but the ones she remembered were not as innocent and relieving. It was a day just like this on August 6, 1965, when she was born. Even though life was normal at first, it changed when she turned three and her parents separated. She, who could barely slide into her clothes by herself, was left in the care of her grandparents for the rest of her life. Her mother, Rhonda, completely went out of her life and remarried. It was then that her grandparents adopted her. You would think it was a welcome relief, but that was far from it. Tracy still remembered the day when her grandmother had been out with her friends and her grandfather had forced himself on her, saying he needed to do it to survive. She had believed him then, but as it went on and on, she felt herself loathing his touch. The very sight of him in the same room infuriated her, and when she saw her half-sister Michelle being beaten up by her grandmother, being treated like shit, she wanted some release from that trauma, and she found it. It was the story of a vampire that captivated her. When she came across the myths that shrouded the existence of vampires, she felt herself being drawn to them. She wanted to know them and understand how they were. In a way, she wanted the power they wielded so that she could mend her life. She was so influenced by them that she even wanted to try being one herself. Aside from vampires, dark things interested her. Where girls her age would dress up Barbie dolls and play house with their friends, she would want to disintegrate that very doll and perform blood-bathed rituals on it. Where the children her age would play board games, she would lock herself up in her room with Ouija boards trying to talk to the souls of the dead and bond with them so that she could emulate them. However, her greatest shock came when her sister, Michelle, ran away from her grandmother's clutches one day. Tracy didn't blame her. She knew Michelle was miserable and was happy that she'd escaped, but she soon started feeling lonely without her. She wished Michelle had taken her along. Her loneliness lessened when she met a man, she was just 16 then and did not know how cruel the world could be. He was her friend's husband, but he seemed interested in her. So for once, she let herself believe somebody. She thought she could trust him, and soon she ended up pregnant with his baby. However, when he forced her to abort the baby, she realized that he had just been with her to sleep with her, and after the abortion, he would have nothing to do with her. The sound of the door clicking open pulled her out of her thoughts, and she strained her eyes to look at one of the jail guards who brought her breakfast. Be ready for trial by 11, she said, setting down the plate of pasta on the table beside the door. She turned around briskly and banged the door shut, locking it. The sight of that food made her want to throw up, but she got up and picked up the plate. 
Staring at the sticky pasta, she lifted the fork and started pecking at it. She could get the brushing done later. She was just too hungry to bother about cleanliness. Sunshine, she mused. The yellow color of the pasta reminded her of Sunshine, her lover for a short while. Being 18 and naive, she had inherited an enormous fortune from her grandparents, who had passed away shortly. So even though her friends, the little she had gained from working as a prostitute for a short time, had warned her several times that Sunshine was just with her for her money, she ignored it. But when she had a miscarriage and had spent all her money by maintaining a lavish lifestyle, Sunshine indeed left her. Hell, she had been in an affair all the time. She had been very depressed then. Living every day had become difficult but there was something that made her hold on. It was the fact that she was a vampire. Just the thought of it filled her with confidence, and she made frequent tours to the butchers to get hold of small amounts of animal blood to quench her thirst. When Lisa came into her life, she was in ecstasy. Lisa, being a self-harmer, frequently visited the hospital almost 80 times in five to six years. In Lisa, she found the relief she had been seeking. She, too, shared her interest in occult and macabre rituals, and Lisa let Tracy drink her blood by slitting her wrists. It was because of her that she had tasted human blood. Tracy didn't know when, but she'd already finished eating, and it was just half an hour left to be 11. She realized she'd been thinking for a couple hours now. That was all she could do. That was why criminals were locked up, so that they could realize they had committed a crime, one that needed to be punished. And to be honest, Tracy had accomplished that during her remand detention already. Stepping into the shower, she let the cold water cool her down. After a while, when she was fully dressed, another guard arrived to escort her to the court. She walked with them to the entrance of the building and got into a car. The guards entered the car and locked the door. Tracy hung her head low, counting her breaths, anticipating what was to come. She regretted her actions so much now. If she hadn't met Lisa, Jervis, and Tracy Waugh, this wouldn't have happened. Only if they'd tried to stop her in her fantasies of tasting some fresh blood, Mr. Baldock wouldn't have been killed. Only if they'd tried to talk some sense into her head, she would have listened. But being a cult crazy and a worshipper of the dark, they had all found solace within each other. And so it was no wonder that neither of them tried to stop her, their leader. The car stopped and Tracy looked at the familiar building that she'd seen several times on the TV. It took just a little time to get to the room where the trial would be held. As she entered the room, the hair on her neck stood up. The jury, along with the sea of journalists from different media, looked at her. She was tensed. However, she did not have to wait long. The trial lasted only nine minutes, and Tracy pleaded guilty to the murder of Edward Baldock. She recalled seeing herself in video footage where all of her alternative personalities had appeared and spoken to the psychologist. She had multiple personality disorder. Other people lived inside of her, and she did not even know. However, the revelation did not come as a shock to her. Maybe because she was already living a nightmare. She would never have imagined that there were people like Bobby and Avril inside of her. They were as worse than her abusive grandmother, but it was because of him that they had been born. Unknowingly, she had been trying to shut her tragic childhood out of her mind. After the guards took her back to jail, she wondered what she would do locked up there. She remembered that she dropped out of college and planned to get her graduation done. It was yet another life of loneliness in the jail, but this time, she hoped to make a better person out of herself. <laughs>